गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ कंपनी लॉ एंड द वेरी फर्स्ट थिंग दैट वी आर गोइंग टू कवर टुडे इज डेफिनेशन ऑफ कंपनी वट इज डेफिनेशन ऑफ कंपनी कंपनी इज डिफाइंड इन सेक्शन टू सब सेक्शन ट्वेंटी ऑफ कंपनीज एक्ट टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन अकॉर्डिंग टू लॉर्ड लेंडले company is association of many persons who contribute money or money's worth to a common stock and employ it for a common purpose the common stock so contributed is denoted in money and is the capital of company the persons who contribute it or to whom it belongs are members the portion of capital to which each member is entitled is his share so this is the most acceptable definition of company definition of company under companies act 2013 says section 220 of companies act provides company means a company incorporated under this act which act the companies act 2013 or under any previous company law so this is the only short and sweet definition of company which is mentioned now let's discuss essentials of a company the very first essential of company is its capital then business third is incorporation type fourth is documents like memorandum of association and articles of association then prospectus or statements in lieu of prospectus then the next is perpetual succession of a company thereafter common seal then management that is board of directors etc then allotment of shares then it is payment of dividend and debentures thereafter annual audit and return and general meetings so these are basically the essential 10 essential characteristics of a company now let's understand very briefly what does each one of them actually mean incorporation means that a company gets a personality after its incorporation although it is an artificial person it becomes a body corporate and distinct from shareholders in this case the family members formed can form a company but uh, it is again supposed to be very distinct and separate from the company itself the case you can uh, consult is salomon versus salomon company limited in 1897 second is limited liability in case any loss occurs in the company the shareholders liability is only to the extent of their share which they actually hold their lim- their liability is not unlimited thirdly the corporate economy company can raise maximum capital in minimum possible time by public subscriptions like shares etc even the public financial institution willingly lend to loan companies loan can be taken by them fourth one is perpetual succession it means the death insolvency or transfer of share does not in any way affect the corporate existence it retains the same entity with the same privileges and immunities fifth one is right of a person or individual company can sue and can be sued in its own name sixth separate property company's property is separate property although the shareholders have some right in it but the ownership and possession of the property of the company is deemed to be of company and not of shareholders seventh transfer transferability of shares 
the shareholders can sell their shares in open market as share are deemed as movable property under section 82 on transfer of shares and transferee uh, the transferee steps into the shoes of the transferor and is vested with the rights and liabilities thereof but the transfer of share does not affect the existence of the company this is very important next is eighth one is common seal after incorporation of company is entitled to have a common seal to be used in its own name by the companies uh, amendment act 2015 section 9 of companies act 2013 has been amended and now a common seal of the company shall not be used by the members of the company from the date of incorporation centralized management the shareholders do not manage the affairs of company but the board of directors consisting of experienced skilled and well versed professionals handle the handle and manage the company and take it to a most or best advantage position last is company is not a citizen though a company is a jurist person it is not a citizen under constitutional law of india or citizenship act 1955 the question whether a company in us is a citizen was decided by supreme court in state trading corporation of india versus commercial tax officer in 1963 wherein the apex court refused to recognize the corporation as a citizen and last but not the least point is head office of the company company may be situated anywhere but it has got every right to have a registered head office elsewhere in accordance with its convenience it may have several branch offices so friends i hope this lecture there's a small lecture on company's definition and its essential characteristics will be of help to you and you will have a better understanding of the subject stay le learning stay blessed bye bye for now